Hey you all, Muscle High to Follow Dressmakers. You're welcome to another interesting tutorial. My name is Confidence. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this gorgeous style. It's a maxi dress with so many features that makes it a unique one. We'll first analyze this style before we get into the tutorial proper for the better understanding. And the first thing we see is that it has a 180 degrees flare running from the waist all the way to the down. It also has a detachable stylish skirt embellished with cup chains. On the neckline, we can see some pleats, which is basically a transferred dart. The waist and the bust dart were transferred to the neckline in a pleated dart form. At the back, we can see that it has a zipper and lacing situation going on there. It also goes down all the way to the detachable skirt. The sleeve is just a basic sleeve, a long sleeve and a half circle sleeve going on there. And that's basically it for the full outfit. I'll be showing you how to go about all of this in this video, but it's going to be more of cutting than sewing. So it's for you if you can sew with little or no supervision. For the fabric, you can use any fabric of choice, but satin or silk fabric will be a better option. Here I'm using a silk crepe, which is not stretchy in any way, but that doesn't mean you cannot use a stretchy fabric for yours. I have 5 yards, which I ended up using 4.5 for this tutorial. I couldn't get the exact satin used in the reference style, but this goes. We will be starting with the upper parts and you will need your basic bodies, which I already drafted mine out, with just some modifications. I use one and a half for the waist dart, one and a half for the bust dart, three and a half for the neckline, three and a half by three and a half, one and a half for the shoulder slope, then for the chest area tightening, that's the armhole tightening, I use them um, 0.75 instead of half inch I usually use. That's like adding 0.25 to what I usually use to tighten the chest line. That's because the neckline is going to have some pleats and it's likely to add extra fabric going to the armhole area. This would help eliminate that. So whatever you use to tighten the chest area, do it to add 0.25 to that so that um, it's really smooth on that armhole area. Then if you look at the down part, you will see that I extended the half length on the side waist by half inch. It's really nothing out of ordinary though it's not the regular but I do this whenever I'm making a dress that would have a flare from the waist down. Just have it in mind, uh, I might be explaining better when we get to the back bodies, okay? So now for the slash and spread, the plates on the neckline, the first one, when you look at the picture, the first one starts exactly on the center point of the neck. Then to get the second plate, I'm going to go in one and a half from the center. I'm going to place my one and a half just on the center front of the neckline and mark it. Then the center one will be going to the bust point. Then the second one, I'll be marking two inches from the bust pan line. If you have one and a half inches space on the neckline, you're going to do two inches on the bust point line. Okay, so this one is going to the just the bust point this way. And then the second one will be going to the two inches, one and a half space on the neckline, two inches going on the bust point line. I hope that is clear. So if you have um, one inch space on the neckline, you're going to do one and a half space on the bust band line, vertical line, right? Then I'm going to open the waist dart and close the bust dart. Fold in the dart this way and place it on the bust point line. I'm going to use my water glue to hold the paper. In place just like this then after that I will be blending in the side seam line this way and that's it next thing I'll be doing now is to go ahead and um, open the that we have on the neckline so I, I can close the waist that I'm going to slash it all the way to the boss point line this way then I'll be able to close the waist that you see me traced, right? That's just to make it very easy for me to fold the paper and place it on <laughs> this other that line. It's nothing serious. Then I'm also going to slash it, slash this line going to the boss point this way. Now this is what it looks like. I want I had to press the paper just to make it smooth. It was giving me a hard time. Now I'm going to get a fresh um paper and place it under this slash we have here. And then we are going to spread it nicely. I measure the distance I have on this opening here. And that's what I'm going to use to um, like spread it nicely. So to make it very easy to move this one, the second 
slash i'm going to open it this way going to the boss point but do not or cut it all through just open it just the same way you see me do it then bring in a fresh pattern place this one on it this way make sure you have a space at the upper part and then make sure it's like it's smooth on the center part the paper you are using is actually straight on the center part of the bodies then i'm going to be spreading with just one and a half i don't want too much pleats if you want your pleats border you can do two inches or even two and a half depending on whatever you want but to me i'm doing one and a half space from the center part of the neckline i measured one and a half mark it then i'll place the paper on it i'm going to also measure one and a half mark it then make sure that this other part is right on the one and a half then i'll tip it down nicely and then we we'll proceed to the next stage i'll bring in my tracing wheel and trace all this line just trace it nicely be careful so you don't do it the wrong way and this is just to make it easy to fold there's nothing serious about it if you can fold it nicely without hassles just um ignore this part but it's easier for me this way okay so i'm going to fold all this spread so we can blend in the neckline but then i'll cut off this excess paper so that it's easier to fold the dots after that the direction of the pleat depends on what you want but following what is on the thumbnail the pleat or yeah the pleat is coming to the center front the direction is coming to the center part of the neckline so i'm going to fold it and then place it close to the second line and not on it do not overlap just place it close to it then you're going to tape it down temporarily do the same thing for this second one you fold and then place it close to the other one and then you tape it down too then after that i'll bring in my curve and recurve the neckline just go ahead go ahead and do it this way so that you don't go about wasting your time or doing it the wrong way after that now i'll go ahead and cut off the neckline i'll blend in the waist line and then we cut off every other part we need to cut off so when you want to blend in the waistline of something like this you know bodies like this transfer that that is likely to add fullness to the neckline or center front of your bodies you are simply going to come up on the center front on the waistline come up 0.25 this is because the pleat is likely to extend the length of your um half scale bodies so if you don't do it this way it's likely to be dropping on the center part of the waistline i don't know if you understand so when you're doing this kind of neckline or cow neckline just go about blending in the waist this way and you will see the effect it will give you afterwards so you're simply going to transfer this to the fabric and cut it on fold but then one last thing on the shoulder i'm going to come in by half inch 0 0.5 and then i'm going to blend it in from that half inch going to the armhole and the reason for this is i want my shoulder to be my shoulder like let it sit at the shoulder point because you already see how it's looking if you don't do it this way it's going to make the shoulder drop because there is going to be excess fabric around the neck area and you don't want it to affect the shoulder just follow all the steps you'll come back to say thank you <laughs> okay now for the back you're simply going to draft your basic bodies just your regular back bodies this way the half length here is supposed to be 15 and a half but i have 15 inches and the other half is that half inch i added to the side waist i might have to do a separate tutorial on that but like i said i usually do that when i'm making a flared dress that will start on the waistline just so the back will sit pretty then another thing is that you must have your bust pan line even if you don't want to add that just go ahead and have your bust pan line because that's where the loop for the lacing will be going okay then just like we did for the front i'm going to go in on the shoulder tip half inch and blend it into the armhole and that's it i'll go ahead and cut it out the neckline is three and a half by two inches in case you're wondering and i have my zipper allowance following the center back contour line and by the time i cut it out it's looking like this you can see that the front and back is actually the same length now on this side okay 
so after transferring to the fabric this is what it looks like i'm using same fabric for the lining then for the front after doing the plate and all of that that's when i'm going to place it on the fabric and cut out the lining or you can use bias to pipe the neckline if you want but then you can see that i didn't cut the dart for the back i didn't open it i'll be doing that when we are ready to do the back now what you're going to do for the front is um i was supposed to notch the center point of the neckline because that's where uh, two of the darts will be going like one side one dart on one side and the other one on the other side so i have it now i'm going to pleat from the notch i actually forgot to mention you're supposed to notch please notch all those slash lines just notch it so that it will be easier for you then you pick from one notch and then place it on the center and then you skip one notch then take the last notch and place it on the one you skipped just like this it's very simple then if you're not using a very slippery fabric like mine another way you can do it is a, is to actually pleat it on the paper with your fabric and then you iron it that way you're very sure that the pleat is going to follow the same shape you have on the pattern paper i hope that is clear enough but if your fabric is slippery <laughs> just ignore that step because it's going to give you a hard time it's not even going to form it's going to really waste your time and not give you what you want but these steps also works just pin it down this way then you're going to stitch it down then when you want to iron you're going to hold it on the neckline and on the waist stretch it this way and then you iron you see that the that is going to the direction it's supposed to go and that's it so after doing that and ironing you can see what it looks like the space for the bust area it's already there looking at us then you can decide to actually iron these darts all the way to the waist by the time you wear your dress the space you have for the bust will still um like your bust will still take the space it's meant to to take i don't know if you understand or ju you just iron it just the same way you see mine then for the back now i'll be opening the darts it's very simple so that i have the two dark legs then that's where i'll be sewing then you're going to stop opening it one inch before the end of the dart one inch before the end of the dart your dart can actually be longer than this if you want but this works for me okay i'm trying to indicate the wrong side of the fabric even though <laughs> it's actually hard to know where is the wrong side of this fabric now i'm going to place it this way then i already prepared my this rope that i'll be using for the loops the only thing i'll be doing now is to go ahead and cut it in bits just in a way that it will give me what i want for the lacing and then i'm going to i want it four on both sides that's it so i'm going to cut eight of these and then we start placing it so four for one side of the back and this four for this other side of the back I'm going to fold the loop into two depending on what you want you can just fold it into two and place it on any side that you want okay then you place it this way or you actually open up the loops okay you place it this way and pin it down or you open it up you first place one point then you open it and place the other leg like half inch down just like this then you're going to pin it down and then you're going to continue like that the other one will be on the same point with the first with the last of the first one don't know if you understand just watch closely just the same way you spread it evenly until you get to the down but then to make it very easy for me i'm going to take two of these loops and make it shorter than the rest just this way so one will be going for one side of the back and then one will be going to the other side of the back just like this can you see we still have our four loops and the reason for this is that you're going to stitch this yeah you're, like you're going to close it like a dart it's actually a dart so you're going to stitch it like a dart the end point of that is usually like pointy or slanted and not with what you started on the waist so it's going to be like this so the first one of the loop is supposed to be smaller than, than the rest so right by the time you place it this way pin it down 
and then you place the other leg this way pin it down and then when you take the long one and do the same thing it's going to be the same width like the loops is going to come out being the same and not one being longer i hope you understand so just go ahead and do it this way or anyhow you want to do it but just make sure you maintain the same width of the loop and then you're going to stitch it like it that then after that for the lining i'm simply going to uh, close the dart fold it this way then close the dart all the way to the end and that's it for the upper part now let's talk about the down part and we are going to do just a little calculation for the flare the whole length i'm working with is 60 inches and the half length the upper bodies i use 16 inches so 60 minus 16 is going to give me 44 inches and i'm going to add one inch to the 44 inches making it 45 inches that one inch will be the joining and folding allowance for the flare now 45 will be the flare length right to get the radius i'm going to now bring in my waist measurement which is 27 the waist is 27 divided by 3.14 which is the calculation for half circle 3.14 and that will give me 8.59872611 which i will just approximate as 8.5 or 9 inches if you don't want um too much allowance to come out just do 8.5 but if you want like tiny tiny pleats plus your zipper allowance you're going to use the 9 inches so now to fold the fabric i'm going to plus the length and the radius length 45 plus the radius of 9 inches that would give me 54 inches so folding my fabric now i'll be folding with 54 inches so that i don't go about wasting my fabric then to fold i don't have enough space to be showing you how i fold it on the fabric but i'll be using this paper to illustrate so let's say on this paper now this part is the width of the fabric and then this part is the length okay width length like this is the original amount of this part and then the length twice of the fabric is this part you're going to measure on the width that's the original amount of your fabric you're going to measure from one end to 54 inches then you start from that 54 inches and measure down to another 54 inches then you're going to fold the 254 inches this way and then you take it on that 54 and bring it going to the lengthwise this way can you see so this way you now have four uh, folds of fabric two parts unfold and then the other part open just go ahead and do it this way i'm going to fold it exactly this way on my fabric and make sure i have 54 inches by two by the end of the day and this is exactly what i'm talking about so two of the fabric is actually open while the other part is unfold like closed i'm going to measure from the tip of the fabric this way and measure around my nine inches and connect it and this will be the radius and after that i will now start from this radius and measure all around the down part of the this fabric my 45 inches i'm going to measure 45 inches all around and show you and this is what it looks like so here i have my radius and then from the radius i have the length of the flare which is 45 inches so to get the length either you start from the tip of the fabric and measure down to 54 inches measure it all around okay you should have enough space for your flay or you use the floor but because of this tutorial that's why we are going on it uh, about it this way okay so either you start from the tip and measure 54 inches round or you start from the radius and measure to 45 inches and have it all around make sure you're following the radius that you have there if you're measuring the 45 okay then if you're measuring from the tip of the fabric make sure your fa your measuring tape is firm on the tip of the fabric while you measure the 54 way around okay i'll cut it off on the length and on the radius and this is what it looks like i measure then i have <laughs> i think i have 30 inches yeah 15 inches and my waist is 27 so the other three inches will be for zipper allowance and tiny tiny pleats which will not even be obvious so like i said either the approximate we did that you do the eight and a half so that you have just your zipper allowance or you do um nine inches if you want extra 
I will be joining it to their papa this way, but now let's cut the stylish skirt. And I'll be using pattern for that. So I'm going to measure from the top all the way to my hip line. So you're going to measure like get your hip line from the waist to the hip line. And mine is nine inches. Then I'm going to build it out this way. The next thing I'm going to do is to simply take my waist measurement here. And then I'm going to go to the hip line and take the hip measurement divided by four. I'm not adding any allowance. Feel free to do that if you want. But I just have my exact measurement here. Then you're going to get your bust band. Mine is seven and a half, which is 3.75. I'll mark it on the waistline and also mark it on the hip line. But then if you want it like wider, you're going to add about 0.25 or half inch to your bust pan line so mine like i said is seven inches i'm um, seven and a half which is 3.75 but i think i'll just make it eight so here i have four inches now as the bust pan line and i'm going to connect it so this will be where the curve will be going to which you will still be finding out in this video and from the waistline going to the hip curve i will go down to five and a half you can go down for as much as you want depending on how large your hip is but then the distance between the part you, you marked to the your hip line should not be less than three inches for the curve i hope you understand from where you marked you should measure to make sure you have at least three inches at least then i'm going to mark the same thing on the bust band line which is five inches just so i make sure i have the same three inches down even though i do not even need that point i marked and I'm going to give it this curve this way, going to the five, in, five and a half inches I have on the hip curve. Then on the center point, I'm also going to come down five and a half. Then this part, I'll be using my curve. <laughs> Just want to feel myself. I use free hand on the other part, and you can also use free hand. I think free hand is better because it helps you um, curve it better, but you can also use your curve. So after that, like I was saying before, make sure the distance between the part you mark to use to curve is at least 3 inches from that point to the length of the skirt. I hope that is clear enough. It should be at least 3 inches. You can even do 3 and 4 inches, 5 inches, depending on how pointy you want it or how curvy you want it to appear. So anyone you want, just go ahead and do it. Then you're going to cut it out. I'm going to use this one to cut for both the front and back and add the necessary allowance. You might want to indicate the waistline of the part going to the top. I transferred to the fabric, added my half inch stitching allowance all around. The front part obviously will be cut on fold. Then the center back, I added half inch stitching allowance. Then if you'll be going for a loop, you know, listen for the center back too you're going to cut off like two inches from the center back two inches one inch or one and a half anyone but just so you create a space so that by the time you lace it it's not going to be looking weird on the center back go ahead and turn it i'm using same fabric as lining and after stitching it down like joining it as a skirt you're going to embellish with your cup chain then for the cup chain Depending on how long you want it to be, just make sure you have four strands of cup chain on the front and then also four on the back. But I have two at the back for mine and then four on the front. <laughs> then for the sleeve, like I said, you just have to have a basic sleeve, long sleeve. Then you're going to minus the flare length from the whole of the sleeve length. Now I'm using 27 inches for the whole length and then I use 20 inches for the main sleeve. Then the other 7 inches will be the length of the flare, which I'm going to cut out now. This fabric I'm using now is already folded into two. I'm going to fold it again um, to just like you want to cut a full circle. That's it. I'll fold it. Then I'm going to like measure around the radius to make sure I have my round sleeve measurement. You don't need to add any extra allowance or something like that. It's flare, so it's going to expand. Just make sure you have your round sleeve measurement um, except you want it loose then you're going to add like half inch to it and i'm going to measure the seven inches length of the flare all around then afterwards i also use the same fabric as lining and that's how i ended up using four and a half like i said in the beginning of this video 
so if you're not using the same fabric to turn or that i used the same fabric to turn in this tutorial you might end up using um three and a half or four yards so after cutting the full circle i'm going to open it up this way sorry my camera the f um like the flare part while cutting it is out of the camera angle but it's just something like this if you don't want it to flare at all you're going to cut a 90 degrees flare you cut a 180 and then you slit it into two and that would give you 90 degrees and your this is the outcome the finished look is just what all this dress and i love love this dress everything just came out so well and the compliments i got <sighs> So this will be the end of our tutorial today. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section and I'll see you on my next one. Be good. Bye.